Hello, I'm Manfredi de la Gerardesca. I'm an art historian by training, and by profession I've been for the past 35 years an art advisor. Manfredi, thanks very much for joining us. Many people listening and watching will be very interested to know why you chose to leave the UK for the great uncertainties of Italy. Italy, one of the worst impacted countries in this global pandemic, yet you decided to go there just before the lockdown in London began? The first reason is a self-preservation one, I'm afraid. I actually suffer of a heart condition since last year, which would uh, be very, very endangered by uh, the coronavirus. So I definitely would like to try not to cross paths with it. And, and in taking that decision, I decided that in leaving my life in London the way I was living it, probably I would, would have stood a much greater chance to encounter trouble. And given the news aired on TV all the time about what the government was doing and the position of Boris Johnson, I decided that maybe the Italians, because they were deep in it already, were sort of getting my vote of confidence. But I certainly stand a better chance to do something about it here than I did in London, where I would have overwhelmed everybody else, the, the NHS, or I would have had to rely on other people to go and, and deliver things to my house. And um, I think social distancing in this precise moment is social distancing. You have to stay away. Of course, we wish you all the very best with that. But do you feel you. that this high risk groups that we've been told about, meaning the aging population, but also people with pre-existing and underlying heart, lung, liver conditions and more, yes. do you feel that these groups that include you in the latter are being written off somewhat? As you well know, Italy is the population in Europe that has the highest rate of elderly. We are an, an old population. We are growing at the slowest rate in Europe. Obviously, there are people that are very high risk, and there are many of them. And the, um, the system, the hospital system, is completely overstretched. And obviously, we're going to see this more and more. The situation in England maybe is slightly different, but I still think that from a personal point of view, you want to take yourself out of a system, not because you're scared, but also not to burden that system. So my responsibility is as much to not get the illness so that I don't have to check myself in a hospital so that other people can be checked in hospital. I think that it's my civic duty to stay uh, healthy. I have friends from around the world that I speak to and those that are less privileged obviously are those that are at much higher risk. My friend, you talked about going to Rome. That was the flight that you took from London to Italy. You landed in Rome. You yes. posted a picture on your Instagram. There was absolutely nobody. It is a very surreal feeling that you get from that. It's very strange. We are 7 billion and we always feel we are 7 billion. All you have to do is walk through an airport normally to feel that we are 7 billion. And to walk through Fiumicino the other day was, was just mind-boggling. Is there any major world event in your lifetime or one that you've heard from your parents or grandparents that comes close to comparing to the current settings in which we now find all of ourselves in? Oddly enough, this year, both my parents would have been 100 years old. They were both born in 1920. They got married in 1945 during the war. My father was in the war. They lost uh, um, their entire generation of friends in their 20s. So I grew up in a household where the sense of an event that had absolutely and dramatically changed the course of everybody's life. Uh, I think that my parents, all because of that, kept a sort of sense of instability during their lives. They were always worried about uh, over uh, uh, consuming things, of overusing things. That habit of not overusing, conserving and sharing, but at the same time, always trying to make sure that there's enough for everybody. Because I think that the narrative you're sharing with us now leans very clearly to a world before COVID-19 and a world post-COVID-19. This consumerism has preoccupied people for far too long. As a matter of fact, what you should really be more preoccupied is what your relationship with your fellow human being is mm. and how we can be actively involved in trying to make everybody else's life a little bit better rather than a little bit worse. When I was talking about my parents, I was thinking about their obsession 
on on consuming things like electricity, turn off the lights or, you know, the heating or things like that. The worry was that you don't waste. Waste is bad. And I'm afraid that our culture is only made and based on waste. And we waste everything, especially the planet. As we close out this conversation, perhaps to people who are younger than we are, who are struggling because it's a rapidly changing world, what words do you have for them? My duty is to stay alive. I'm part of a system and as such, I have to keep healthy so that the system can keep healthy. And this is exactly what we're trying to do in this in this situation right now with, with the rest of the world. It is difficult to do it with 7 billion people, but we must try. And Freddy, you are a kind person. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. The China Current continues its special coverage on the coronavirus outbreak. Go to our social media, at The China Current, and our website for interviews, videos, and podcasts. I'm James Chow. Thank you.